Off the south coast of Iceland, one November morning in 1963, a trawler crew thought they saw smoke coming from a fishing boat on fire. But as they got closer, they were witnesses to the most extraordinary sight, the restless earth in the magnificent act of creation. It was an enormous uh, icing cake. <laughs> it was a very funny, very funny colors and, and beautiful. It was a really beautiful sight. It was very exciting, of course. The search eruption was a tourist eruption. But the birth of Sotse was no accident. Like Mount St. Helens, its eruption here was part of Earth's pattern. For below the Atlantic Ocean, there runs another of Earth's danger lines, a splitting seam where two of the Earth's plates are tearing apart. Along this splitting seam, new land is constantly being formed. The 16 black rocks called the Westman Islands have all been born from the sea exactly like Sotse. Heimei, the only inhabited Westman Island, emerged from the ocean just 5,000 years ago. Like all Westman Islanders, Hjalmar Gudnason had seen the birth of Sotse with his own eyes. But he never expected that the Earth had unfinished business on Heimei too, as he set out for a midnight stroll in January 1973. I was looking uh, up the hills and I saw these sparks coming, uh, seemed to come right out of the chimney of the house, but uh, then they started to uh, coming up like a fountain of fire. And then I realized it was uh, something, something else going on. In a few moments, there was a whole line of fire from up the hill and all the way down to the sea. Paul Zofinjason, the young town engineer, was also out that night. It was like the devil himself was tearing up the earth with a welding torch. We saw the fire was coming towards us very fast. The crack was eventually two kilometers long. In the middle of the night, Paul called a meeting and the decision was made to evacuate Heimai. By the night's end, fishing boats had carried more than 5,000 islanders to safety. Hjalmar was one of the 200 men who stayed behind to try to protect their island home from the volcano. There were continuous explosions and like a, a thousand cannons going on all the time. It could go on like that for days and days, and, and uh, it was impossible to sleep because of, of the terrible noise. To begin with, the curtain of fire burned across open fields. The wind was blowing the ash away from town. But on the third day, Heimai's luck changed. The wind started to blow from the east, and in just one week, Half a million cubic meters of ash fell on the town. When I was looking around, the whole island was as if it had been uh, painted completely black. And I think this is uh, probably the, the worst day that I experienced in, in a way. I thought this was all over here. Nothing could be done to, to, uh, to make this place <laughs> worth living in anymore. Now the curtain of fire had become one single volcano, sending streams of lava downhill towards the ash-covered town. The islanders tried everything to stop it reaching their homes. I thought it was a, a stupid fight at first. <laughs> it was very uneven. And I saw the houses being pushed out of the way. Everything was pushed out of the way. 
then eventually the lava starts to crawl onto the town slowly and slowly and until it came down to where my house was situated and in the end it was taken by the lava burnt down and, and uh, pushed away, there was nothing left But worse was to come. The lava tongue began to creep remorselessly towards the harbour. And without their harbour, there would be no hay mine. If the lava got the harbour, everyone w was sure that then the fight was over. Then that it was uh, lost altogether. And so the main fight was to fight for the harbour. The idea came two weeks after the eruption started, that it might be possible to stop the lava flowing. We made some experiments with fire engines hosing the lava. We saw that it got cold very fast and the lava stream looked for another direction to go in. No one had ever fought a volcano and won. But Paul organized a massive system of pumps that sprayed seawater continuously onto the lava for weeks. No one was really sure why, but at Easter, the lava stream turned. The harbor and the island's fishing industry were saved. We were so elated. I can't describe it in words. It isn't possible. It was so wonderful. In the end, there was a victory. We could move back. And uh, there was a lot of happiness coming back. For Hjalmar and the 400 families who lost their homes, Returning to the island was a happiness mixed with regret. Today, Fire Mountain casts a shadow over the town that beat the volcano. But it is quiet. Until the next time.